passwords. So I'll be uh, today showing you some stuff. There's a second session on password that will be more directed towards Active Directory. Today is just showing some uh, thanks. Some uh, uh, regular bad habits we might all have that kind of leave passwords easily accessible for uh, eventual attackers or red teamer in the in the security context. Before I start, let me do the five four three two one five four three two one. Title slide. I said that already. <coughs> Sorry. So this is who I am. We make it very short because it's the beginning uh, of the talk, and they said to skip it. Uh, these are my kids, and I just want to say hi. Love you guys. Um, this is a quick eratum from a PowerShell uh, conference in Seattle, where I used I used the meme from Jeffrey Snover, that was actually in the slide deck from Lee Holmes before. And like Jeffrey said, he didn't really understand it. So as an apology, I tried to fix it. And I just <laughs> added something he might, he might just now recognize. Um, this being done, so this session is going to be like about password and security awareness. I work in security, so I think security awareness for a wide audience outside of security conferences are important. And of course, I love PowerShell, and you guys all love PowerShell. So this is going to be about showing what you can do with very little line of code and uh, with PowerShell to get the, the job done as an attacker. Both of them is basically a pretext to talk about the other one, and it kind of works. Uh, the agenda for today, so <clears throat> as an introduction, I'll be uh, like setting the scene and talking about identity as the new perimeter. This is something we hear, it's quite in fashion to say, and we'll try and see a bit what that means. And then we'll dive directly into demos, mostly demos for this uh, session, small demos, uh, dropping passwords out of several places, and maybe you will recognize some, uh, some bad habits you or we or your colleague might have. And then, of course, at the end, some uh, takeaways and uh, conclusions, and we'll see what we can do with all this. Um, before we start, a good news and a bad news. Bad news, you probably heard like Grumpy Cat is dead. So I can't rarely do this, but I'd like to take five seconds of silence for Grumpy Cat. Three, maybe. And that was the bad news. Thanks for him. <laughs> <laughs> the good news is like Sad Joe is still alive. <laughs> well, I won't say th this is the kind of stuff that makes me love the, the PowerShell community. Oh, we all love PowerShell, we're geeks, we do computer stuff. But there's in a community something more when you create events like this, the way people bond. And like from Sad Joey, this year there's a pins. Somebody made a statue out of it. I just, I just find that fantastic. One more thing, this is not in my slides, but yeah, I just got a prize from you guys, so I just want to thank you all. I think, uh, yeah, I do this to kind of go over my fear of talking in public, so I'm quite happy I got a prize for it. This talk won't be as good, so I'm leaving the prize for somebody for next year. <laughs> I tell you already. And uh, yeah, I just want to thank, he's not here, but uh, Yab Brasser for putting my name down for a PowerShell user group some two years ago, and ever since I did PowerShell Conference Asia, PowerShell Seattle, two times here, security conference, so yeah, sometimes you just need that push in the back to get started, and the community is made for that, so again, I love the PowerShell community. Um, now, this is done. Show me all your passwords, um, and I said identity as the new perimeter. This is something you might have heard. This is uh, uh, so like a retweet from uh, the shell father himself. Do notice, like retweeting is cool. Quote retweeting is even cooler. And when you quote retweet with a this and three exclamation mark, it means like this is important. So if identity is the new security perimeter, then solid identity management is a core requirement. So many organizations are not good at it. Scary times. That was basically the, the message, and that's what we're going to talk about. So what do we mean by uh, security is the new perimeter? <coughs> Here is um, uh, what we call the attack kill chain, where all the, the successive steps an attacker would have to take to get to his goal are um, 
uh, sorted in categories, and you do see after the exploit is where the, the perimeter would be. Uh, traditionally, we think of defending the perimeter as defending your web application that are facing the internet, and you can think of, I don't know, local file inclusion, uh, SQL injection, all this stuff. But the exploit very often is way simpler than this. It's often phishing, and it's often uh, reuse of stolen credentials. So this is why the perimeter now becomes a part of like managing your identity in the, in the business. Quick raise of hand, do you use emails? <laughs> I made it easy for the start. So <clears throat> this is a statistic out of the data breach investigation reports. Uh, that's a report made every year by uh, Verizon, an American telco provider. Kind of summarizes all the finding of the, the breaches and crunches it in, into numbers so we can try to get an extent of the, the problem we have. So here we see simply 32% of breaches involve phishing. So you, me, everybody as a, as a user can be targeted. <coughs> the good thing is we all get security awareness training, right? So I guess you all get your one hour PowerPoint and five questions to answer. And we're sorted, we sorted phishing. It's not the topic for today, but this is another one of my uh, topics. Raise your hand if you use passwords. So cool, we got a, an interesting topic. 29% uh, of all breaches involve stolen credentials. So this is to say again that we might think of zero days of any kind of exploit, but again, in reality, it's very often simple, simple uh, credential reuse. Scary stuff. On the top of the hacking activity, so what does a hacker do? What's really a lead hacker? Well, simply using stolen credentials is the most, uh, the most way efficient way of hacking. Uh, all the rest, you see RFI, SQLI, buffer overflow, exploit, is way less predominant, actually. So you are being targeted. Um, I'll just show you this one, because I think graphics speak. <coughs> Sorry. Let me get out of here. It's a bit loading. So this is just to visualize in the years. Let's start by the bottom. Let's. So all the data breaches, and just I'll show you the legend here, but the, the browner it gets, the more the data that was in there was sensitive, and the bigger the round, the more the amount of a stolen credential was important. This is well known. We use this as a list. There's a lot in there, but have a look throughout time how it develops. This is something we heard about and we remembered as big, the Sony hack. Uh, things are getting worse. <laughs> There's more and more. Maybe you heard of this one. Here we're reaching half a billion credentials. That's like huge. There were credit card details in there and everything of all the people who stay in the lounge in the executive hotels. So that's quite a, quite a juicy, juicy breach. But you do see that it adds up. And uh, yeah, I think. They are right in saying like credential is the new, the new perimeter, and we do have to be uh, very careful in how we hand out credential, how we revoke them, how our users use them, where we store them, and that's um, a bit what I want to show for today. So, mm -hmm. of course. We did that, we did that. Sorry about that. If you use passwords, that was a good joke. Up. Are you, do you know this uh, website, Haven't Be Pumped? So it comes back a bit to what uh, Tobias uh, showed you earlier with a few lines of PowerShell he was about to contact an API and ask if your password is in there. There's this nice little uh, service or website uh, spin up by Troy Hunt, a security researcher. He gathers all the, all the, the breach uh, credentials and um, identity, stores them in there, and you can simply input your email address and see if your email address is half of the identity that has been found in the breach. Have a look at the number in the bottom here. I circled it in red. There's like seven billions in there. That's the population of the planet. So <laughs> it 
it's quite scary. We do all have several, but still, I find this type of statistics should be kind of an eye-opener that all of us at the user level, we also have a responsibility for the overall security posture of our business or even our own private light in the way we, we handle uh, our credentials. So if, if you really, if you want to have a look at this and just type your email in, there's no, you're just going to say yes or no, you're in there, it, it won't do more. There's more services offered at the, at the pro level, but just as a user level, you can just check if your password has been found or your email address has been found in a known breach. And when you do that and it says yes, that's a good incentive to change your passwords, I guess. I hope. Um, so on the attacker kill chain, what I just explained is the, the credential can be used to exploit and get the initial foothold in the, inside the network of the, the company. What happens after is also very much linked to uh, stealing credentials. And uh, the first example you can come up with is an attacker on a box would probably use Mimikatz to drop credential out of memory. So I'm not going to be talking about Mimikatz today. I'm not going to be talking about Active Directory passwords. There's be a, a second talk for this. I want to talk about all the, um, let's say, the little comfort we take sometimes with passwords that without understanding maybe the consequences behind them. So as of now, demos. The first one would be uh, remember me in the browser. And uh, uh, I have a VM for that. Chic. Let me do this. Yeah, the first one, I was in the queue this morning getting my pass, and somebody said, oh, you're talking about passwords. Are you going to talk about the one in the PowerShell history? I put the command here uh, quickly. There's not much you can do as a user to change this. This would have to be done uh, most probably at uh, an admin level. But uh, the, the ones I want to show you, it's in there. If you need the command, you can simply, or we can even run it, I guess. I might have something, something to show you here. Oops. That's very easily how you retrieve the from your uh, PS read line history. And here I put the keyword password. If there was somebody using passwords in his command list, you could look for credential. Increase the font. Yeah. Well, I won't be using uh, a anymore, so let's just click that one. But yeah, sorry for that. Just. I got the command here if you like, and you will, if you try it on your system, you can change the pattern here and say you're looking for credentials, for example. Um, the one I want to show you now, how with two lines of PowerShell, you can drop a password, for example, that would be saved in uh, Internet Explorer or Edge. And you can draw your own conclusions, but I would think maybe storing them in uh, this form is not the safest way to do it. So. Simply here, uh, I have two fake email addresses for Twitter, for Facebook, and uh, you just pull them. So how does this work? Very simply, if you go on um, Twitter or Facebook or any site you have to log into, even though they try to be smart nowadays, but if I say log in and I put uh, psconfu, I might have done a typo here, don't. Remember me. I can click on this little uh, stuff here. He says, OK, so I update my password. Don't raise your hands if you do it. Do it in your head. I'll still see it. But <laughs> do, you guys, do you guys store passwords in your browser? Uh, I'm not saying, but I think we all do. Uh, simply here, so I changed it. And if I rerun the, the command, you will see the. Oops. And that's the, oh, did I? Maybe not. That's the, the power of PowerShell here. So two lines of code. I made a function, but you wouldn't really have to. Here we're loading an assembly in memory. And directly behind, we're using it with the, the methods that go with it to retrieve the, all the identity for each of them, retrieve the password, and uh, simply show me the username and password. So here, again, not very crafty attacker, two lines of PowerShell, and you get, uh, you get the job done with this. This was for uh, Chrome. I just did it in Chrome. That's why my demo didn't work. This was for IE and Explorer. Uh, Chrome doesn't work with this. It seems to be saving credentials differently. So let's do it here. <laughs> um, 
that's the, the, the code. I, I took this from the internet. So also many hackers, security researcher, we don't invent the wheel every time. We, we're good at Googling. So I think the best quality in IT is knowing the term you need to put in Google to find the answer you're looking for. So all you need to have is vocabulary and Google. And that, that does the job most of the time. So this time here, I'm dumping them from Chrome. It's not a function. So if I run it like this, let me see. Oh, it is a function. What did I do with this? Yeah. So here you see I just changed it in Chrome to psconfu, and the password became this. The guy said in his code, I wasn't able to split the URL username. Should be easy. So indeed, uh, there's probably uh, like I could ask Matthias to come up with a regex to kind of extract all this. As a human, I can find it and, and use it. So again, these are snippets of code. They're not finalized, but I'll, uh, I'll share all this, and you can, uh, you can play with it to, uh, to have a look at all this. So simply, I have every time a slide with a fix. Uh, remember me in the browser, don't do it. The fix I would propose is to use a password manager. Can I, can I ask this? Are you guys uncomfortable saying it? Who uses a password manager at work? Ah, fantastic. At home? Awesome. Well, you guys came to a security talk, so I know you, <laughs> <laughs> you're a bit interested in the topic. But yeah, that, that's good to see. I do go to several businesses. We do see businesses that have not yet implemented an enterprise-grade uh, password solution for their employee. I think as an employee, it's something you can request. Like so many credentials, we can't remember them all. So you can say, hey, you're putting me under stress having to remember all this. I'm starting to invent pattern, reuse passwords. Please give me a password manager. And the more we do this, the more we, we get it done. Uh, next demo, remember me in the tools. Uh, let's see. Let's close this to keep it tidy. Um, so. This is actually, uh, I'll just do that, uh, credit the, the authors every time. So this is uh, extra taken from the session gopher from uh, Arva Nagy. I hope I say it properly. W what I like to do to learn stuff is simply when I find a tool that I like, I, uh, I read the code and I try to rewrite it differently. Just to learn a bit of PowerShell and a bit of the technology or the, the product I'm trying to, to tackle. So here I just rewrote it and it does actually also Chrome. And, uh, but I'm just going to use it in this demo for, uh, for um, tools. And then we'll see, of course, uh, then we'll have a look at the code. But um, I can simply say invoke NetMonkey search FileZilla. And here, if you have saved any password in uh, FileZilla, Save this, good. Next time you want to connect quicker. Uh, it's that easy to drop. We can do the same thing. I don't know who uses uh, FileZilla, WinSCP, Putty, MobileXterm, all these kind of admin tools. You can drop credentials of all these tools if you, uh, if you tick the box, remember them. So let's simply have a look here. If I say File Site Manager, I'm going to put a new site, psconfu. And then uh, let's leave Josh mode, doesn't matter. And then a psconf eu. I say OK, save this. And simply now we were in FileZilla. Oops. Did I do this? No, I did like so. And you see John Smo now has this. Uh, so every time you kind of save a session in a FileZilla or in a, in a WinSCP, and actually it's Patty behind uh, working on it, you can, uh, you can drop the passwords like this. Again, I will offer you a little uh, workaround, a little fix. You'll get it by the end of the demo, I think, by the, by the end of the presentation. Remember me for the tools, same thing. Just use a password manager. It's the best place, one central place to put them, and um, it does the trick. Let's uh, maybe have a look, just, just to see the, how cool is PowerShell, uh, look at the code. I, I, yeah, some of the stuff they do, I, just, I tell you, I just copy-paste it, because they're doing cool stuff. Let's see. 
search Chrome, that's something else. I put it all more in one just to be fun. But here, what, what we're doing basically, the cool stuff, we're already like PowerShell is all. Oops, sorry. I'm still on the demo. So yeah, PowerShell is the, the super glue of Windows to access any type of data structure, any type of, you can talk to the registry, you can talk, and we do a bit of all this in here. So you see we're setting up an XML as null, then we're putting a, a LDAP filter here, then we launch a WMI query to get the username, and then we launch it again to get the user. And uh, from the XML, we can start to select the node and so on. So again, the code will be available. Have a look at it. But even when you read it, it's like I, I can understand what it's doing. And then you can start to try the same technique on other tools and see if it works, if it's the same structure the data is stored on. So I tried like four tools, and they work. I would recommend that you test your other tools. Very often it's located in the user app data folder and you find the, the folder for the for that tool and you can start to play with the file, see what's in there, see what you can extract. Because we're, we have a foothold on the user machine, everything I'm doing, I'm doing it in the identity of the user that I'm acting upon. So I, I, I can just like this user read his passwords from the, the secret vault, and that's normal behavior of Windows. There's nothing here wrong with the, the way it works. It, we're just, I'm just you, so I can do what you can do. And that's the funny thing about it. Um, now, probably because I changed the password, you didn't see this. But the next demo I wanted to quickly show uh, was about like password lists. So here you see that my user seems to like to use the, the tool name and one, two, three after his password. So we're starting to see a pattern. This is also something in uh, password hygiene. Not only should you use a different passwords, of course, for all sites, but they should all be. Uh, they should not follow a, pat a pattern. Otherwise, if I find three of your passwords, I can start to say, hey, that looks like this. And I can make a list that would work uh, on all of this. So let's have a look. Uh, here I have two little commandlets, get password list. And get password list accepts like different lists. And you can like combine them to make the whole. Uh, that was a funny little uh, iteration. There's probably a better way to do this by like doing for one, two, four, and like loop all this. I just wrote down everything. But we, can, we accept a maximum of four lists here. Let me just do this. Um, I have three, three little files here. Let's see, adjective holds a few adjective. Oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I took common ones. I'm not the one deciding what's common. So this one is also in it, and it just happened to be the one showing. Doesn't matter. We have uh, colors. Uh, probably your favorite one is in there. And we have a few animals in there. And then you can simply say get password list color animal. And he will compute everything. So yeah, count is not a real command, but I do have that. We just generated 100 passwords, but we can even go quicker if I saw that you like uh, eject it. <laughs> Wait, I shouldn't have put it last. Sorry, <laughs> my bad. And if you're like crafty and you kind of say, "Hey, uh, I like to add a little salt in there and put a number at the end," we can also do that. It takes a bit longer, but like whatever pattern you think of will be easily done by a computer once I found your pattern. So just. I'm just saying don't use pattern. Here I'm putting all this in a password list. And then we can get that list, of course. They're all here. And then what we can do is get the content of that list and run it through another function that I have here. That is pointless. You could do what you want, but it's just convert to lead. Some people like to hide their password in, like, I don't know, lead. So we do this, and I put it in the lead text. And then if I ask for the lead text, you get all the password. But this time, the, the letters have been changed. So like generating password list is really easy. Plus the 60 gig of passwords available from Have I Been Pwned. I think your password is probably somewhere in there. So 
yeah, the random passwords is the, the best, and like those um, password generators or password managers will generate them randomly for you. So don't even look at it, don't even change it, accept it for what it is, and just start using it. That's the best way to not have to remember even it. It's like it's not rememberable. So it's the best. Um, let's just see if I have anything on the slides after this. Password list. You're getting there. So, oops, use random passwords. And uh, the tip for this is just not to generate. Random is hard to generate ourselves. So just use a password manager for this. And that, uh, that works perfectly. The next one is something that I, I see a lot uh, at uh, customers. I don't know if you guys do this, but I find a lot of little text files with passwords in it, like, oh, it was in the vault, but I'm on another machine, so I, I just typed it in a text file and left it there, and when I need it, I, I come and get it. This is clearly the type of behavior that endangers the whole security posture of your business. I guess in the security or security people like you uh, are aware of this, but this is also the type of message we have to get down to the, all the way to the end user. And um, let me show you a little demo about this. So, so I have two little tools that I wrote for a real job, actually. The, the, the idea was that to go on a Hyper-V server and just all the machines that were running there have a look at what's, uh, what's running on there. Um, first one I want to run is the Invoke, oh, that's the tiny, Invoke Regex Remote. Well, so my naming, um, my naming convention for functions is always as complicated. I, I never know what to choose, so I chose Invoke as a verb. <laughs> I know. I'm trying really hard to stick to a rule, so Invoke works for me. I can use it everywhere. <laughs> and. Um, we're going to give it a, a folder, so let's just say uh, desktop without, oops, oops, and we're going to look recursively and we're going to search for passwords. That would be cool, it's the name of the talk. Oops, what did you like? That's another one, just I say it every time, but if you put your errors in green, they're way less aggressive. No, it's true. It's, uh, we're all humans. We're, we're taught since birth that red is dangerous. So when you see red, you're like, whoa, I'm not typing anymore. When I see green, I'm like, true. <laughs> when I see green, it's like he's trying to tell me something. And he's telling me, like, the term invoke regex, regex is not recognized. So I didn't load my commandlets. Classic error message. I should have known. Um, Let's do it like so then. Up. There were none. Okay. Maybe my demo was on the documents. Sorry about that. There were none. Ooh, thanks. <laughs> It's not a legend, like I think Tobias even put it in his slides, so I feel ashamed. Well, you can be a very bad typist and the best presenter of 2018. <laughs> <laughs> Up, voila. So this is just like, let's have a look, maybe let's stop him, let's have a look at the code. This is a great, uh, this, these are like, well, one of my favorite commandlets is the select string. And let's see how this, uh, this whole code works here. Well, I'm testing a pass, that doesn't matter, but the one I want is the select string. This is like, even if you're on Linux and you have a beard that long and you're the king of grep, the moment you see select string, you're like, wow, I might have to install PowerShell, I think. Because really, like, you can do really cool stuff, like look at the context before, after, get all the matches. So this is what we do here. And of course, like, 
the tool is, uh, if I don't say what I'm searching for, actually he's going to look for everything, so IP addresses, uh, host names, passwords, uh, I'm not even sure what I put in there. But he's like recursively going through the files, looking at the content, seeing which ones are cool, or something to look at. Um, and yeah, I combined it. I combined it for efficiency with a, another one of my favorite commandlets, which is the invoke command. And like with a simple invoke command and a select string and a bit of regex. So I, I'm not the regex king, but I, I managed to put a lot in there. The idea would be to add more. So the more your your dictionary or regex has stuff, the more you can start to look for things. But I'm grabbing like uh, private keys or. Yeah, GitHub tokens or everything. So everything you leave in a file, be careful. Everything you leave in a script, be careful. Select string is a very powerful tool. You can just launch it. It comes back with the result. And here uh, we're going to launch it uh, remote. So let's see. I have two VMs running. Yeah, I have two VMs running. I'll just do this so you get syntax coloring. I'm going to look in the files with an extension uh, text. I'm going to search for password recursively on the document folder on both of these machines. Chung, asking me for code. He's asking me for something. Yeah, this is tools you can use as an admin to like check yourself before they wreck yourself. Like it's a quote from Ice Cube. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so hop. And by running it, we found, so he found some item passwords here, uh, license. So yeah, he's hitting, it's a regex, so he's hitting on a lot of stuff. And the, the attacker or the admin would have to sift through the result and see what is a false positive, what is really a password that's been uh, lying around. But uh, yeah, we did it here for two machines. You could do it on your whole infrastructure. That would be a nice, nice dream. You get the admin password, then you run this on the whole stuff. And brings back everything, and we're like uh, uh, throttling, so he's doing like a hundred and max something computers at the same time. But you can really do cool stuff with those those type of invoke commands and uh, a simple uh, select string. The next one is even a bit more tricky, but I saw that like because people are smart and they think, okay, but if I don't leave a file that says password, <laughs> you're never gonna find it. So, oops. What's happening here? Terminator, yeah, okay. That's me being a bit sloppy. What did I do? Well, oh, I did F8. So here I'm going to do tiny spider. Uh, no, invoke tiny spider. And I'm going to say in, uh, let me do this somewhere. I don't have something private. <laughs> no, it should be fine. I'm, I'm on a VM. It should be fine. Let's do it on the desktop. Oops. Something like so. Should, uh, no. Let's see what it comes up with, yeah. So the idea here is that we're using the exact same uh, commands. And you can like modify what. But I'm saying, OK, any file that has a maximum of two lines, I'm thinking maybe he put username and password without saying in front username double dot password. So if there's two lines in that file or less, so maybe one line, give me that, uh, that file and, and uh, the, the content of it. So here on the desktop, I normally have a file that is just a file. And in this file, I have just like super secret one, two, three. Even that, when you think you're safe, he's never going to find it, because I'm not saying it's a password anywhere. Uh, yeah, you can very simply by doing the select string, asking for the context. If there's no more context, no more than two lines, or if there's so many characters, you could even say if there's no white space, you could really start to um, have fun with it. And I think, what did I add? Yeah, so you can say what file extension you want to be looking into. You could even like maybe check your scripts for this kind of stuff. So again, if you haven't looked at um, select string, I think it's a, a gorgeous PowerShell commandlet. I'm not really in favor of regex, uh, not as much as Matthias, at least. But yeah, select string is a, is a cool one. 
Let me see. Where do we start? Mm -hmm. Solution to this? Are we getting there? Yeah? Use a password manager. Somebody is following. I like that. Um, okay. Now, password managers also have their own weaknesses in the way they work. Again, I think you saw the slides. I am really advertising or trying to say, hey, use a password manager. At the same time, like password managers are not uh, inattackable, let's say. So let's see how we can do this. Uh, I guess you all know how KeePass works, so since you all use it. So let's see. Oop. So this one is a key clip. Uh, let's do this. So let's maybe have a look at the code. So it, it, on top here, and that's what also PowerShell is really cool, that when you don't have the bits you need, you can go borrow them from C Sharp. So we're adding, uh, adding type here, and we're simply importing the user32 DLL into our session so that later I can use this uh, method to get the foreground window. The way password manager works, or the way you might be using it, you store them inside, and when you need it, you go there, so the windows come on front. You double click on that stuff, the password is in your clipboard, the windows, you go back to another window, so your window is not in front anymore, your password is in the clipboard, you clip, you press enter. Very simply then, if I know when the window is in front, when it's in back, and if I can get the content of the clipboard, then I can abuse KeePass in, in that way. Let me uh, start KeePass, by the way. KeePass123. I, I pretended to be my user, I think. I hope. Yes. Good. So here in KeePass, I have, you see, I have those uh, passwords. And what I would do simply is double click, like I just explained. Uh, we're going to launch this. You see here, I have a while one. So basically, no, wait. I imported the DLL to get this method. The second thing I do is create a, in my head, or at least in an invisible uh, uh, um, web form with a text box. And then uh, I set a uh, property on it that it's a single line. Then I wait. I wait for KeePass to be in the foreground, so I get the process where the main window handle get foreground. So this is where all window get foreground will give me the handle of the window I'm looking for. And I'm waiting for it to be KeePass in the foreground. If it's not, I'm sleeping every second, for example. Like, uh, KeePass is 15 seconds, so if you sleep every second, you still will have time to grab it. Then, once we exit this uh, while, it means KeePass was in the foreground, so we can think, OK, the, the, the user did put something in the clipboard. To be sure, we wait for the KeePass to not be in the foreground this time. So simply here. So it was not equal key pass. This time it's, it's equal key pass. And then once this happened, I simply take the content of the clipboard and paste it to, into that uh, form box I created. And if there's something, I just uh, clear it for next time. Now if we run this, so F5, you see that it's uh, running. It's waiting for something to happen. I'm bringing key pass to the foreground. I double click on my password. And I go to, uh, let's say, a website to, uh, to put it. And you do see that the, the password appears here. Uh, same thing, like if you were storing your AD credentials on your home machine, just to be sure not to lose them, uh, that would be bad as well. You do see that this is AD credential, by the way, because the user added June, because we ask him to change it every so regularly. So. <laughs> He's been very smart. The little tool I, uh, I showed you for the password list takes care of this. Company name and uh, three-letter months usually works if your password policy is a bit more strict. Company name, three-letter months, and the year. That usually gets you into a business. So we still have a lot of, a lot of uh, progress to make on that side. Now, you might be thinking, OK, the guy is telling us the whole session. 
you skip us, you skip us, and uh, at the end of the session, you kind of show that keep us is not that great. Keep us is great, and uh, let me go back to my slides. I might have something. The conclusion on this is use a password manager. So <laughs> you might be saying, okay. Um, let's see what conclusions we can draw out of all of this. So, or not draw, actually. First one, you can't forget your password if you always use password. I think we got that one. Don't reuse your password. Don't take anything guessable. This is 2019. This will not get you anywhere. Uh, second conclusion, password managers are pointless. I say not. They're here to avoid password reuse. They're here to avoid weak passwords. And they're here to avoid weak or guessable passwords. Uh, no password manager was designed to prevent post-exploitation. So if I'm on your box, I'm showing you a few lines of cool PowerShell, because we're in a PowerShell conference. I could be doing way worse than just dropping uh, your passwords like this. Mimikatz or anything else, a DC sync, whatever, Kerberos. There's a lot more you can do in AD than just target the, the machine of the user. But still, it's a necessary phase in an engagement. You land on the box, and you start looking around before moving what's there. And if you guys left credential behind, then I won't have to use Mimikatz, and the defense will not catch me using Mimikatz. So it's important to not, because catching a select string is more complicated, I would say. So let's try to avoid that. Um, second conclusion, PowerShell is evil. I know I shouldn't be saying this in a, in a security conference. Of course not, and this is what we try to promote uh, on the field also at customers. If your adversary is, let's say, only mature enough to be using PowerShell in 2019, you have all the tools as an admin to catch him. Let's say, uh, constrained language mode, uh, script block login, module login, all of this is available out of Windows. The question I often ask people who tell me this is if your attacker was using anything else than PowerShell, what controls do you have to catch him? What, what visibility do you have on Python or on Bash? And that's, even though it's coming to Python, I think they took the example of uh, PowerShell and they're trying to put all this visibility into Python that you know what's running at what time and he can block it. Uh, this is, uh, of course, PowerShell security is a huge topic, and uh, we could have a, we do have conferences just about that. Like I work for YRNW, I said in the beginning, we do troopers. If you're interested in like AD security, have a look at last year's content for the trooper conference. It was really a, a lot of good knowledge to be shared here. This is a talk from uh, extracted from a, a blog post and a talk I think Lee Home did. And this kind of really, really, like, it speaks for itself. Even though PowerShell is very powerful and you love it as admins because you can do everything you like, of course, attackers like it. They can do everything they like as well. As a defender with PowerShell, you can do a lot. So removing PowerShell from the network would not really be feasible. You better use PowerShell against the attacker to try to trip him, to try to trip him to use certain um, part of PowerShell that are easily flaggable, for example. But here you do see event logging, transcription, and so on and so on. PowerShell scores on all the line, and I think PowerShell is the, the, good, uh, the good example in that, uh, in that space. And I hope other languages will follow. We often hear in the, in the red team area the PowerShell is dead. Good if, like, attackers have to move out of PowerShell. I still believe we need to defend against it, so I will never say PowerShell is dead. And if PowerShell is dead, I would say long live PowerShell, then for defense, for all the rest. So for me, PowerShell is far from dead. And not every defender is a, an Apex defender. So more uh, info, you can find all the links uh, on here, some tools. So in my uh, SAT processor folder, it's a mess, like my code. I'm, I'm not the kind to produce stuff for the gallery and maintain. I like to share snippets, and I often reuse them, change them. They're not, uh, they're not static, and they use them, <laughs> I would say, uh, responsibly. Um, <laughs> I didn't say anything. Don't do it without any authorization uh, at scale like this. It's not nice. 
uh, slide and demo code so will be uploaded. So the, all the, the snippets, I will upload this to the PSConfiU uh, site. And uh, if you have any questions, I think I'm bang on time. Yeah. Like, if you have any questions, not about asking me what I do with passwords and if I also do all this bad stuff. We all have our little dirty secrets, but uh, let's try to move away from it. Any questions? Yeah, it's maybe not really a talk where you can have, yeah, please. Uh, so the question was, can, can I try to catch him when he's doing the autofill-in, the, the other functionality where you yeah. don't... Uh, I, I didn't try that one. Well, I'm thinking that he might, in that case, store them somewhere in the browser or share them with your own password vault, but I would have to check. Yeah. I know, like, a lot of users use it with the double click. I know there's also this functionality to autofill the browser. But you're necessarily leaving some information somewhere. And if you manage to find a way keep us passes it to the browser, you can just at that moment try to catch it and see what's in there. And so, yeah, there's no, no perfect solution. But I think, uh, yeah, if we sit down and we look a bit into it, we might, uh, that could be fun to do. Yeah. I was able to catch up some typing in from the user as the characters, but never to catch up the key pass, input from the key pass, not from the keyboard of, of yours. Yeah, so that's why I, I like key pass actually, because like key loggers are a real pain, because they log every key and you get like false input in there and the delete and the typos and the, Whereas the password manager getting it from the clipboard is clean and easy. So I, I, I'm in favor of password managers. Yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. Well, if that's it, yep, sorry. Is there much difference between the password manager, in effect, and a plain text file under the user profile, which is protected by the user encryption, because they're both ultimately getting decrypted? Again, I will come back here to the conclusion I tried to give that a password manager, like, there's security is a multi-layered team sport. And we all have our share, and we, all tools have their weaknesses, strong point. This password manager is not here to prevent from anything else than password reuse, weak passwords, and uh, guessable passwords, which your text file will not prevent from. So, of course, uh, I showed you, you can drop it from KeePass, but uh, yeah, KeePass is not made to be uh, undroppable. It's made to force you or to enable you to use strong, unguessable passwords. So. Thanks a lot, and uh, enjoy the rest of the con, and like, catch me outside if you uh...